In this edition of Detroit Performs, incredibly gifted photographers head out to explore the autumn woods. A man's creativity pours from his beats. A young lady's poetic words help to heal. And Credit Card Detroit shares with us some more citizen reviews. It's all ahead on today's episode of Detroit Performs. Major funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the McGregor Fund. Additional funding is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Detroit Performs. I am your host, DJ Oliver, and we're at the Michigan Science Center, a unique, fun, and dynamic hands-on museum offering programs that will inspire children and their families to discover, explore, and appreciate science, technology, and math. Each of our featured artists today uses technology to their advantage. First up, we meet a group of remarkable people who use camera technology to their advantage. With help from a professional photographer, their pictures create a voice once drained out by society. Here is SK and her crew of Shutterbugs. So we already talked about what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to find alphabets in the trees, like a V. There's a V right there, see? There's a V. So we're going to try and find those, but I also want you to shoot whatever you see that's beautiful in these lovely woods. Yeah. Okay? Cool. Okay. All right, let's hit it. All right, we hit it. You would be hard pressed to find human beings that embody such kindness to each other and um, such dedication to the craft, it just, uh, and such enthusiasm for what they're doing. Hey, hey. hey I love Frank's gone family. pro on me. They're the kindest people I've ever met. Um, they don't have a mean gene. You know, I got that white moment, the white guy, the white everything. As happy and um, I like art and pictures. How long do you think it took that whole log right there to get covered with that beautiful moss? Her cake calling me for doing this and stuff like that. And I told her, yes, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll take pictures. So we're looking at colors as well. I have spent so many years watching people who uh, have special challenges be disenfranchised from mainstream, a lot of mainstream things, and it's always been a burning desire for me to be able to be in the business long enough to see them stand side by side with other artists who are recognized and that they would be equally recognized for their contribution. That has never been less um, than other artists. I think those are bug houses. I don't think they're mushrooms. There's mushrooms on the other side. Patty Sims came into my picture in my world and we decided um, that um, I, I wanted to take people out into the woods on field trips and give them a live experience of what it's like to shoot on location. Kay has such an enormous presence and she directs people well and so Olivia felt confident and her confidence has grown because of this program. This program is very important because I think many times um, our, our students are off the radar and um, when we're out in public, they can see um, the talent and the beauty and the love. Well, people with disabilities, they learn to really fast. People like me, Olivia, everybody else, we learn really fast in our life. So that's why I like it. You, you learn. 
it gave all of these amazingly talented, brilliant people a voice. It gave them a voice to speak not necessarily what they could have said with words, but to show people um, where their passion lied in the woods, um, different places. I love it. It's nature and beautiful too. I like it a lot. I just like doing it because it makes me feel normal. Wow, that's, that's powerful. Art is a powerful thing. And it's, it's in our DNA to make art, to be creative. So if that can make someone feel better about themselves, I'm all for it. See this part of it right here? It just deep pressure off me. You know, it's like, it's like um, a jug of grit is falling out of you. Once you don't think that this you're, you're happy. You have that, that feeling when you're like, oh, I love doing it. You know, and I was saying, I just love it. Look at that leaf, it's so beautiful. Someone has to take a picture of that leaf. That is stunning. They're absolutely brilliant photographers. Um, I'm always surprised at the angles, at what they see that I don't necessarily see. That's the one where I was laying down, like laying in the leaf, and I was looking down. That's the one I like. To see the smiles on their faces when they walk into a gallery and they see their work in, a, in an art gallery, there's, you can't buy that kind of joy. It's beautiful. Every time we do something like this and every time we have an art exhibit, whether it's at the Detroit Artist Market or at the Scarab Club or any other venue we may choose, that when people come and they see, then they know, and when they know, then they believe, and when they believe, they're inspired. Got it? Yeah. Yay! She has learned to express her inner thoughts and her inner feelings by the images that she produces. And it's so much simpler for her to snap a picture than to verbalize what she's feeling internally. These are the kinds of things that change lives. I've watched people who you know, felt like they had very little to contribute who were socially isolated, who started participating in our photography programs and literally just came alive. You can never diminish the value of that. I wonder if we could even count how many different colors we actually see. This is making her happy and it's making all of us happy, including all of our family and friends. They're all involved in it. I love everything about it. We all need to get it and have good. When we are out, it, it gives people a chance to see that, it, again, we're all from one big family and that the talent and the brilliance and the love that is always shown with, the, with them toward each other, with um, the parents, with everyone who's involved. Oh, the blue jay feather. Oh, wow. the blue jay feather. Oh, the blue jay feather for you. Thank you. Come on. Come on. I see a gratitude a gratitude that they have for the people who work with them. You know, people like Kay, people like the parents who support. Yay! Oh, you got it, great. That's nice it. shot. I want to thank you, Kay, because I like to take pictures. You can learn more about this photography project on DetroitReforms.org. Patrick Ward uses technology every day at his job as an audio tech for Detroit Sports, but it's when he heads to the studio that his true creativity shines through. Here he gives us a glimpse into his chosen art forms. Yeah. I'd like to welcome y'all to my thing. <laughs> Sit back. Relax and enjoy. I started making music probably when I was 12 or 13, but the original way I got into music was my mother was diagnosed with lung cancer. When I was 10, she passed away. And before she passed away on her deathbed, she said, hey, what are you gonna do with your life? I'm not gonna be around anymore. And I said, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna be like my dad. My dad worked in a bakery 
foreman in the bakery for 50 years and she was like I don't want you to do that I want you to be an entertainer and uh, I said okay how do I do that she's like you'll figure it out I'll be there to guide you I'm not gonna be around and uh, thankfully enough it worked out 30 years later It's been a long, long battle, uh, starting from the early 90s in Detroit, being just one of the one of the one white kids, few white kids that were allowed to enter into the inner circle of Detroit hip hop and being accepted just because you love the music and you were true to the music. That was probably in the early days, one of my most memorable things saying, man, this is history in the making right now. And none of us really knew that at that time, you know. Then making beats and working with Slum Village and Jay Dilla and working with Binary Star. We were recording an album called Waterworld and uh, Honest Expression, that's one of the songs that made me look at things differently. And another song called One Man Army. It's the one man army, general subliminal, flying through the sky, ready for war with syllables, literary, military, time secret mission, you ain't seen nothing yet. It's like a stealth jet. My mental plane where basically it's one rapper putting himself as a fighter pilot, as a aircraft carrier, as a, a German tank, all these different things that are so powerful and putting all of those entities into different metaphors and different word phrases that you can comprehend, understand, and see exactly where he's coming from. It's the lyricism that, that really does it for me, along with the beat, but I'm always listening to the lyrics. Basically, all I'm doing is just sprinkling on the, the pixie dust to make sure that they shine in those moments that they need to shine in. Specific words, specific movements, specific uh, metaphors, where you drop the drums out, have a little break or something like that, and then bring it all back in, you know? Those are those moments. And honestly, how that happened for me is just being around Motown music and being around Detroit artists. Like Chuck Norris coming to get these rhymes. I got what they missing in action. Stand at attention, military fashion. What we're offering to people, you can't find that musically anywhere else in the country. I, I'm biased because I'm from here. But in my experiences, for some reason, we just look out for our own. If you're from Detroit, you can do anything. We're here at Pearl Sound. Chuck Alcasian, he's a friend of mine through uh, uh, Karen Newman, who sings the national anthem all the Red Wings games. I'm good friends with her. I said, hey man, I need a place to record some stuff or I need a place to do some stuff. He's like, man, it's all Detroit, it's all love. It's, it's that thing where you can't find that in LA. You can't just call up, hey, I'm doing this, can I come over? They're like, get out of here. And he's like, open arms, all love. It, that's Detroit. It's just that Detroit thing. It's those magical moments that happen without words spoken. Being involved in such a special thing, in such a vague thing called music, bringing people together, it's just, you can't, there's no words that can ex explain that, you know? I kind of knew how big of a deal it was, but I didn't realize how big of a deal it was until I brought the Emmys to my dad. And it was the first time since my mom had passed away that I had seen him cry. And he was just so proud and, and just lost it. And I was like, wow. This is really, this is something. I never expected to win any of that. I always wished and dreamed that I'd win a, a Emmy, win a Grammy, win a uh, American Music Award, win an MTV Music Award. Because those are those things, being a young producer, a young beat maker, a young MC, you know, a young rapper coming up, you're, you're like, oh man, next year I'm gonna be platinum. Sometimes it don't work out like that. It, it's always curveballs. And it's how you step up to that curveball and hit it. Either you're gonna strike out or you're gonna knock it out the park. I don't know where I'm at in between that. I just wanna make a base hit. <laughs> so if you got a love, a love. 
To find out more about Patrick Ward as well as all the other artists highlighted today, head to DetroitPerforms.org. Now let's check out some upcoming events happening in and around Detroit. Metro Detroiter Raniqua Kelly Boyd struggled with her emotions until she found an outlet in poetry. In fact, poetry helped her so much that she used the technology from her smartphone to jot down words wherever she was. Here she is as she recites from her poem, Where I'm From. Where am I from? If you were to ask me, well, I'd let you know that I could not give you a simple answer for, I am from many people, I come from many places, I represent many things, and Growing up, I was always the geeky, nerdy kid. I got straight A's, but when it came to friends and being the social butterfly, that was never me. And I guess you could say I was the weird kid. Instead of playing outside, I'd rather stay indoors and play with my dolls and write. Like, what seven, eight, nine-year-old writes all day? That was me. And so as I got older and I realized that I guess I was different from my peers, it just made me feel like I didn't belong. I began to notice her, her poems change. They were almost scary to some degree. And because of my background and training, it sent red flags to me that perhaps she needs someone other than myself to talk to. And so that's when, you know, I asked Reniqua, how did she felt about maybe seeing a counselor. I am from the hugs and the loving to the fights and the cussing between me and all of my loved ones. That's when I like to hop on a plane and escape from it all. I think she felt, Mom, you're a social worker. Why do I need to go and see someone? You can counsel me. I had to explain it to her. No, I'm mom first. I'm always going to be mom first. Everybody always thinks, oh, well, if you're a parent, like my mom is a therapist, so people would think, you should be able to talk to your mom about everything, but it's, it was a complete opposite because when it comes, I guess, in her shoes, what I had to see, her being a parent, it was harder for her to look at me as like she does her clients. And so my mother said, I need someone else because I can't separate the fact that you're my daughter from the situation. She needed, we needed an outside source. I am from the thousands and thousands of pages of every notebook that has ever been touched by my pencils and pens and been filled with my words and all of my hurt and my joy. Yeah, nobody knows me like they do. I truly feel like if I did not write during those most pivotal years from when I was nine to now, because you know, I went all my teenage years, I've used poetry to get through where most teenagers act out you know, whether they're doing drugs or partying or just doing whatever, you know, cause that's what teenagers do. We act out to try and get attention, to be heard, to be seen. Instead of me acting out in a negative way, I use poetry to help me get through whatever I was going through and whatever I was feeling in a positive way. I just love working with Reniqua and um, I think that it's helped her uh, find her voice more that she already had it. She's been writing for years since she was in fifth grade. I would say that um, using the arts as a form of therapy is becoming more and more an established practice. I don't care if you're mad, you're angry, whatever, that you can write them down so you'll have those things. And then you can go back in retrospect and understand them. 
she's able to take uh, very specific, concrete images and put them on the pa page, then will project to the reader uh, her feelings. I am from acne bumps and sizes 11 to 16 jeans, all depending on my mood and the seasons that switch and swing. I am from always telling it just like it is. I am from always handling my biz. My thing is, I don't wanna just go through my teenage years overlooking low self-esteem, overlooking trying to find myself, because I'll be 30 still having those same problems, 30 and 40, and then it's even worse by then because I'm, you know, I'm grown. And that's why all my life I've, I've tried to work on myself. I just, that's why I always say I'm a, I'm a process of progress. That's what I always say, it's a process of progress. I know that I am not perfect and I'm far from complete, for every day is a process to make progress and improve in order to become a stronger, wiser, and overall much better human being. But where I am from has brought me to where I am. I saw instant improvement after, even while she was in counseling. I could see gradual improvements with her being more social. You could see her self-esteem just increase and, you know, she was more welcoming. She was more willing to communicate with me, even with things that she thought I may not be able to handle. She was just a whole different kid. With therapy, it made our bond even stronger. Like, it, it, we, we grew. And ever since that experience, me and my mother have been 100 times closer than we even were before. I'm thankful that she didn't give up on me because I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten to therapy without her. I thank God for all that I have experienced, endured, and overcome, never forgetting where I am from. For my time to shine is now, and my time to grow never ends. This is only the beginning, because I know where I am from, but I also know where I am going. You can find out more about Reniqua on DetroitReforms.org. Let's see what the mobile arts journalism team Credit Card Detroit has been up to. Hi, my name's Erin. I'm at the Detroit Institute of Arts. I just went through the Watch Me Move exhibit with my three-year-old son, and I thought that it was a great exhibit um, for both of us. I learned a lot, and he was kept captivated by the animation. Frank's life, or Frank's frames, or whatever was pretty interesting, um, but a little bit more adult than the Walt Disney fairy tale type stuff, but that was it. Come down and see it. It was great. You can view more of Credit Card Detroit's citizen reviews on their Facebook page and YouTube channel, which you can find through DetroitPerforms.org. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Performs. As always, for more arts and culture, head to DetroitPerforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on upcoming arts events. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'd like to thank the Michigan Science Center for having us out here today, and also for striving to help the next generation of Michigan engineers, scientists, and innovators who will impact the cultural and economic renewal of Detroit and Michigan. Hey. That's what Detroit Performs is all about. Until next time, get out there and show the world how Detroit performs, y'all. I am DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys. Major funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the McGregor Fund. Additional funding is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.